Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really, really great. In this part, we are talking about quadratic equations, which is a very important aspect of algebra and certainly gets a few questions in the CAT exam. So you must see two to three questions from quadratic equations at least. And I'm pretty sure that you will all be able to do it. So let's begin. Let's revise the basics first. Particularly, if we talk about the basics of quadratic equations, it begins with the general form. So what's the general form of a quadratic equation? AX square plus BX plus C equal to zero. What is an example? An example can be X square plus 6X plus 9 equal to zero. Here, if you see A is equal to 1, B, which is the coefficient of X is equal to 6 and C, which is the coefficient of which is the constant term that's equal to 9. Right. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to 6 and C is equal to 9 in this example. Another example can be let's say 2x square plus 3x plus 4 equal to 0. Now here if you see A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3 and C is equal to 4. So these, ex these equations are the general form of quadratic equations. Now a quadratic equation is different from a quadratic expression in the in the terms that there is not an equation there. For example, if I write x square plus 6x plus 9, it is certainly quadratic, but it's not an equation. It is called as quadratic expression, right? So that's the difference between expression and equation. Now about the general form, I hope we have some clarity going forward. Let's begin and see roots. Roots also called as zeros, also called as solutions of a quadratic equation. Let's see a very simple example. Let's say x square plus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. How many ways can we solve for the roots? First way is the middle term splitting. So midterm split, how do you do? Let's see. So you have x square plus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. Here you have 1 and here you have 8. First step, multiply the first term first coefficient which is a with a constant term which is c that here gives 1 into 8 equal to 8 now split the middle term or the middle coefficient here the middle coefficient b is equal to 6 split 6 in such a way that the multiplication of the coefficients is equal to a into c so 6 can be split into 4 plus 2 and multiplication of 4 and 2 is equal to 8. So then it becomes very very easy. So let's see x square plus you have 6x which can be written as 4x plus 2x plus 8 equal to 0. So then this becomes you take x common so x plus 4 from these you will take 2 common so x plus 4 now you will take x plus 4 common from both so then you will get x plus 2 equal to 0. So now if you put these individually equal to 0, the possibilities are x is equal to minus 4 and minus 2. So these are the roots of this quadratic equation. I hope this is clear to you. So first and foremost, middle term splitting is the best, uh, is the fastest way of getting to the solution, getting to the roots of a quadratic. Now what's another way of doing this? Let's see. The same, the same quadratic can also be solved through the discriminant method, right? But you should use discriminant where the roots can't be found by middle term splitting. So let's see what is a discriminant root. For any quadratic x square plus 6x plus 8, let's say equal to 0 or a general form of ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Discriminant is given as b square minus 4ac. b square minus 4ac is the discriminant and the roots are given as x is equal to minus b plus minus root over discriminant divided by 2 into a which is the coefficient of x square. So you just solve it. So this becomes minus 6 and what is the plus and minus here? There will be two roots. So one root will be plus. In this case what will be the discriminant? The discriminant is b square which is 36 minus 4 into 8 which is 32. So equal to 4. So minus 6 plus root 4 divided by 2 into coefficient of x square is 1. So 2 into 1. So 1 root is this. 
another root is minus 6 minus root 4 divided by 2 into 1 so this becomes minus 6 plus 2 so minus 4 upon 2 which is equal to minus 2 and here you will have minus 6 minus 2 so minus 8 upon 2 which is minus 4 so the roots are minus 2 and minus 4 right I hope this is clear to you so using the discriminant method also you can find out the roots of a quadratic okay if you can't do middle term splitting you can resort to this method now a very important aspect which is called condition for real roots once you've calculated the discriminant you have to make sure that the discriminant is either greater than or equal to zero only then will you get the roots as real roots right and what are real roots for example if you see the concepts of numbers anything which is there on the number line is a real number for example 3.67 4.73 are all real numbers if you have any number which has a imaginary or a complex component to it then it is called a complex number or an imaginary number right for example let's say you have a number here which can be written as let's say a uh, 3i you must have heard of iota which represents root over minus 1 primarily this does not form a key component of cat and hence we are not getting into greater detail here now if we are talking about discriminant and condition for real roots let's see an example for example let's say 2x square plus 3x plus 4 equal to 0 now in this case what is the discriminant b square which is 9 minus 4 into a which is coefficient of x square into c which is the constant term so this becomes 9 minus 4 into 2 is 8 into 4 is 32. So clearly discriminant is negative. What does it mean? It means that this, this quadratic equation is never going to get a real root. Now let's understand this in the context of graphs. I hope you've all seen the concept of graphs that we have cleared in the last part in the last video. I hope you've all seen that if you have not do check out it really clears the basic concepts of graphs and you can draw all kinds of graphs relevant for cat if you've seen that video now let's see this concept or the concept of roots from the context of graphs very simply if you take the example of let's say x square plus 6x plus 8 equal to 0 or any quadratic for that matter and let's you know draw the coordinate axis then then a quadratic which has which has discriminant equal to zero will have two equal roots what does it mean it means that it will touch the x-axis only at one point let me give you a very simple example x square plus 6x plus 9 equal to zero so if you will solve for it if you will solve for the root here the root will become equal to minus 3 if you so here minus 3 is the only root right so this is how this curve the quadratic is a parabola it will touch the x-axis at only one point which is minus 3 you can find out the discriminant here what is the discriminant b square which is 36 minus 4 into 9 which is 36 so equal to 0 so discriminant becomes equal to 0 in this case right so therefore in every quadratic where you have only one root or repeated root two equal roots then discriminant is equal to zero let's take another example let's take another example when discriminant let's say x square plus 6x plus 8 equal to zero so here discriminant will be b square 36 minus 4 into 1 into 8 so 32 equal to 4 in this case discriminant is greater than 0 so it will be two distinct real roots and we had solved also so how do you draw the graph in that case the graph can be drawn something like this so the roots were minus 2 and minus 4 right and this is how the graph is always remember when the coefficient of x square is positive the graph is upward 
and if the coefficient of x square is negative then the graph points downwards so always remember this is an important aspect so if a is here a will be positive and here a is negative so i hope the condition of real roots is clear your discriminant in this case in the in another case 2x square plus 3x plus 4 equal to 0 what here discriminant is less than 0 so what will be the nature of the graph here very very interesting to note the nature of the graph here will be since there is no real root possible and the coefficient of x square is positive so it is going to be upward but it will not cut the x axis there is no contact between the x axis and the graph therefore no real roots which also means that the quadratic is always going to be positive it is never going to be zero i hope this is clear to you at no matter what value you know do you put in this expression you will always get a positive value you can check it out yourself very interesting connected the dots i hope you you know you will revise this to make it even more clearer for yourself talking about sum and product of roots sum of the roots of a quadratic equation is 5 less than product of the roots if one root is one more than the other root find the product of the roots so sum and product of roots let's understand the concept and then try to solve this question so if i have ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 which is a quadratic equation then and the roots are let's say alpha beta then sum of the roots is given as minus b upon a which is b which is the coefficient of the middle term negative divided by coefficient of x square and product of roots is given as c by a right i hope this is clear to you so similarly it happens in any uh, you know equation for example if you have let's say a cubic ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d equal to 0 in that case if the roots are let's say p q r then sum of the roots here p q r will be minus b by a product of the roots p into q into r will be d by a so here will be negative positive negative so minus d by a and what is a c representative of sum of product taken two at a time so p into q q into r p into r that is given as c by a right so that's in case of cubic so although cubic and solutioning of cubic is not there primarily in cat but sum and product of roots is something which is important now let's see sum of the roots of a quadratic equation is five less than product of the roots so let's say the sum of the roots is x plus y is five less than product is x y minus y if one if one root is one more than the other root then find the product of the roots very very nice so let's say the other root is one more than the so let's say y is equal to x plus 1 so this becomes 2x plus 1 here we have x into x plus 1 so x square plus x minus 5 so x square we have 2x moving to the other side making it minus x and then we have 1 moving to the other side making it minus 6 equal to 0 so x minus 3 into x plus 2 equal to 0 so x becomes equal to 3 x becomes equal to minus 2 right so what will be the product of the roots so let's say you have 3 and the next is 4 so 3 into 4 is equal to 12 and what else can you have so let's say you have minus 2 and then you have minus 1 so that becomes equal to 2 so the answer is answer option 2 i hope this is clear to you moving forward to another very very important aspect of quadratic which is called maxima minima let's take a very simple example x square plus 6x plus 10 equal to 0 so x square plus 6x plus 10 first of all what's the discriminant discriminant is b square which is 36 minus 4ac which is 40 so b square 36 minus 4 into 1 into 10 so this becomes minus 4 discriminant is negative which means that there is no real root here and coefficient of x square is positive so how will the graph look like the graph will look like something like this what does it mean primarily without even solving for maxima minima we clearly know that maxima is going to be infinity 
there will be a finite minima okay so let's find out minima only there is no point finding out maxima because maxima is infinity so what will be the minima here and how do you find out so a very easy way to find out is x square plus 6x plus 10 an easy way to find out is form a perfect square here so i can write this as x square plus 6x plus 9 plus 1 this becomes x plus 3 whole square plus 1 therefore you have a perfect square here the minimum value of a perfect square can be equal to 0 it cannot be less than 0 so the minimum value that it can get is 0 and here you have a 1 so the minimum value of this expression is going to be 1 it cannot get less than 1 very simple right so that's the minima so you found out in this expression in this case the maxima is infinity and minima is equal to 1 right very simple i hope this is clear to you and how do you form a perfect square that's also very simple let me elaborate that for you so you have x square here you try writing it as a square plus 2ab plus b square where a square is x square so x square plus 2 into a which is x what do you have naturally here you have 6 that will be 2 into 3 so in place of b you have 3 then you write b square which is 3 square so 9 out of 10 you have put 9 here so you'll have to put one more so then this becomes x plus 3 whole square and then you have a 1 i hope this is clear to you what is another alternate way of or another shortcut of doing this it's very simple the shortcut is that you know if you have coefficient a which is positive then you will have minima which is finite and the minima will come at minus b by 2a and the value of minima or the output at minima will be 4ac minus b square by 4a let's see in this case what happens in this case we know that a is equal to positive so minima will be finite so let's apply this so we have x square plus 6x plus 10 so here b is equal to 6 a is equal to 1 so minima will occur at minus b which is minus 6 upon 2 into a so 2 into a is 1 so minus 3 so at minus 3 you will get the minimum value right and what will be the minimum value that you can calculate you don't even need to remember this just put it here so minus 3 square is 9 6 into minus 3 is minus 18 plus 10 so what is the value 1 similarly when you have a negative when you have a negative the nature of graph is like this in that case you will have a finite maxima you will have finite maxima and minima will be very very clearly minus infinity i hope this is clear to you so that is how you can calculate maxima and minima the shortcut formula for maxima minima occurs at minus b by 2a I hope you enjoyed it. Join me in the next video where we'll solve some actual CAT questions from quadratic equations. Thank you so much. God bless you all and bye-bye.